Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are here with you again. And we just want to share with you, we are looking at this matter of um, sickness. We looked last week at how you can contribute to your sickness. We want to build a little more on that today and try to help. Now, one of the things, Pastor Collins, that I believe that we can do is that we could make sure that we're not allowing things to creep up on us that we can spot before and do something about. For instance, I believe in days like today, I should be checking my blood pressure very often. There shouldn't be any reason that I should find myself with a stroke. I should be checking my pressure often, especially if I know that it runs in the family, I should be checking my pressure often. There are machines out there now that you can just press a button and it checks your pressure, it checks your pulse, everything it checks for you. You can know that your blood is up and certain things when your blood is up, you shouldn't use. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit, about when your blood is up. Yeah, I agree with you. People should check often. Uh, of course, there are devices to check in between, but we should at least do one general physical annually. We've been guilty of missing a few years, but I didn't mind for this year and it looks good. And we should make it that habit to do. And it seems like men are less willing to do such things than women. I guess we're just afraid of the bad news or whatever, but we need to do. And it makes a huge difference. I used to work in life insurance. And if you really want to know if you're healthy, apply for a huge life insurance. The amount of tests you'll get run through, you'll know for sure <laughs> if you're good or if you're not good. And it's so weird. There was this gentleman who applied and he hadn't seen a doctor in probably 30 years. Probably 30, 25, 30 years. And there were other people who consistently went to the doctor. And of course, everybody is different. And would you believe that this person who didn't go to the docs for 25, 30 years, he passed all those tests with flying colors and some others who would often visit the doctor, they weren't as healthy. So just looking at somebody, looking at yourself, doesn't give you the full picture, but we need to get checked. And we need, need to also pay attention to our bodies as well. For example, I usually don't get headaches. And if I do get a headache, it's either I didn't eat or drink uh, on time, or sleep is an issue. So we need to pay attention to our bodies. Yeah, that's like pain. We don't like pain. But one of the best things that happens to the body is when we experience pain. Pain tells us that something is wrong. Go and check the doctor. And you said something there that I want us to elaborate a little more on, and that is making our physical checks or annual checks. Once a year is good if you start to fight 40 or so, but from the time you get over 50, they're asking if you can do that every six months. Now, I was speaking with some of the gentlemen in Anguilla who had gone off to the States to, to do some check. And you know that the prostate is something that, that really bothers men a lot today. And, and one of them told me that their doctor in the States told him that no man should die from prostate cancer. None. He said because of the technology today, no one should have to die from this prostate cancer. And I know that men, they have this strange thing about them that they don't want to be checked. And there are different ways how one is checked. You can just check your blood and it will tell you how you stand. What would be your encouragement to, to men? Our men, and sometimes we would have somebody come in to teach on that subject and very few men you would see torn up. It's not something that you're going to see a boy to come out on your skin and you're okay, okay, I'm going to check now because of this boy. Sometimes when you check, it's too really late and too late. Give a little advice. Yeah. Sure, we, we should get checked and get checked often. And like you said, there are some simple tests that doesn't involve invasion. It's simple blood tests. And those blood tests give a very good indication if there's something wrong or if things are okay. And if we continually doing those tests, it doesn't have to be a, a difficult physical test that could give an idea. And of course, there are different things that we can do that can help as well. Imagine worrying makes everything 
worse. Exactly. Makes everything worse. I've, I've read stories where this older, I think he was a, a European, and he lived, he was born on one of the islands off of the coast of Italy. And he lived in the city and he was diagnosed with cancer. I think it was prostate cancer. And he decided to go back to the island where he lived. And long after, he was, his routine changed. And long after he was still living, he was in good health, no worries, no stress that is provided by the big city. And they were interviewing him and they were asking him about his doctors. And he said, most likely those doctors are dead. So he actually outlived the doctors. Just showing how stress and removing ourselves from stress could make a huge difference in our health. Yeah. And, and you know, our intake also. Um, there's a older gentleman, when he speaks to me about health, he keeps reminding me all the time, remember to stay away from SOS. I said, SOS? Yes. Remember to stay away from SOS. I said, what's SOS? He said, stay away from salt. We black people, we love our food, season nice. Uh, but the older you become, I, this is what I have noticed, the older you become, what was a salt for you before becomes salt now at this age. And even if you are eating something hot and it is not salt, let it go cold and eat it. You can actually taste the salt in your mouth. So salt is something, especially if you suffer with high blood, Salt is something that we must be careful with. And then oil. Everything we want, plenty of butter on it, and we want to fry this, deep fry this, and fry that, especially chicken wings. When you're done with them, that elbow, the oil just dripping out, and those type of things. We have to be careful with oil. The older we become, when the body could fight that when you're younger, when you become older, the body isn't able. That fights the body. And then the other thing that we must be careful with, among other things, is sugar. We love it sweet. We love it sweet. Be careful with sugar. So he keep telling me, S-O-S. Be careful with S-O-S. Salt, oil, and sugar. These are things that we, we could stay away from. I had a gentleman in Angola. One time they, they had a flame out and he had a problem with his heart and they took him off salt and this was a, a huge man and just taking him off salt brought him right down past that. i mean he didn't even like it he would tell me you think it easy eating this food the no salt but it brought him right down now, that's one of the ways that you know we can take care of ourselves be careful with the salt intake and and regards to that in a closing word yeah uh, when we eat unfortunately we eat many times for our mouths for the taste yes. that would be on our tongue and the, sometimes the crunch and the feel that would be between our teeth and in our mouth. But we need to eat and supply the body with things that would energize us, that would strengthen us. And we need to pay attention to the effects of what we eat on us. For example, if I would eat a lot of bread, I would easily feel drained. And I tried it in the past, whereas I didn't eat anything at all instead of eating bread, and I felt better than if I were to eat bread. Well, let me tell you about bread. From the moment I eat bread, especially white bread, my heart rate increases. I have checked this out now for years. I was reading a book, Eat According to Your Blood Type, mm -hmm. and bread and O positive blood just doesn't match. And you said something just now that we need to stop and pay attention to, and that is, the food that we love so well, the taste is where? In our mouth. In our tongue. And somebody asks, so why don't run about the taste in your tongue and spit it out instead of swallowing it? Yep. Because after you swallow that food, the taste it's is gone. gone. Yeah. So we, if, if we think of that for a moment, we taste it, we eat it, we swallow it, we put in more. And then some of us, we don't even take time to chew it. We try from one side of our mouth to the next and dung is gone as we become older. These are things that we should be careful with. We are so happy that you took the time to be with us today on Let's Talk. And uh, I trust that these things that we are sharing with you from personal experience would be things that would be able to help you as you to check um, your diet, check yourself, and make sure you stay healthy. We'll be back next week.